Welcome to a demonstration of a brand new feature we have in version 8 of the AI Media Server. This feature is called Auto Blend. It enables us using a camera to warp and blend across multiple outputs of projection. Throughout this demonstration, this image in the top right hand corner will show you what we have on our projected outputs. First thing I'm going to do is launch the AI software. Here you can see our 3D visualizer. Here I have three projectors in this scene. One, two, three, and one screen surface. I'm going to click on the output page, and now I'm going to set which projectors are on which outputs. My first projector here is on output two, and I'm going to set this to be an auto blend. The next projector is on output 3, and I'm going to set this to be auto blend as well. Similarly with the last projector. Now I can click on my configure button here. This launches a utility and this will enable me to warp and blend the output across these three projectors onto this non-standard screen. First thing I hit is calibrate, so I hit this calibrate button and this gives me some options for either a single client or multi-client calibration. I'm going to choose single client. Here we have some options for which outputs we want to blend to and some options for what type of screen we are blending to. I'm going to choose here any surface because this is a non-standard screen. Here there's a drop down for different types of camera input. We're using a simple HD webcam here. Click next. And now we have some options for how our projectors are aligned. We're going to choose here Grib Ar Arbitrary. Click Next. Now the system puts out a checkerboard pattern and this enables us to set the correct parameters for our camera. To do this we click in the Options button here. And options. Here are the settings for the camera. A neat little trick here is to click on camera controls and click auto on exposure for the camera. Here you can see that uh, it's adjusted the exposure of the camera and there are some other settings here that I might need to adjust. I could adjust the contrast slightly uh, I want to bring saturation down all the way down to zero. We want to use black and white images here. Uh, I could change the hertz rating here to 50 hertz to try and reduce some of the flicker from these fluorescent lights that I have in the scene here. Um, obviously ideal conditions would be darkness, um, but if I were to, to have darkness here we wouldn't be able to see the projected image very well. I'm going to click on OK. and click next. Now I can mask out the edges of my screen surface. Using this button here I can click all the way along the edges uh, of my screen and this will give me a mask saying that I'm only interested in the, this area as my screen surface. I keep clicking all the way around the outside, dragging this tool around. Obviously if I had a little bit more time I could uh, make a, a neater job of this, but I, I'm, I'm just roughing out this image all the way around. And this will tell the camera based system that this is my area of interest. I click all the way back down to the bottom here, 
and finish it off with a double click to close the net. Now using this bucket tool, I can mask the outer edge off. So now I'm saying that I'm only interested in this inner area where I see the checkerboard pattern. I click on next and now this system goes into its calibration mode. It sends out a full white image, a series of dots. Now these dots are for range checking and if I adjust this slider here it will adjust the size of these dots and what I'm looking for on my main output here is a set of green dots giving me the coverage of the full area. Uh, I'm happy with this, this looks like a, a, a good set. So there, there is some little areas of red here but this is fine and I'm going to click on next. Now the system sets out a set of vertical and horizontal white lines. This is for range checking, orientation, and to work out the actual geometry of this screen. You can see that the line's curved here on this curved, uh, curved screen. It's a parabolic screen that we have here, curved in both directions. It sets out a set of dots, a set of vertical lines that are scrolling from left to right very slowly. Now it will set out in a, in a moment a set of horizontal lines scrolling from top to bottom. It's doing some very clever maths to work out from these lines the exact geometry and distance from projection of this screen. It sets out a full white to calculate the color balance. And now it sets out um, a canvas for me to see. What I'm looking for here is if there are any artifacts, any pools of um, uneven coverage on, on my projection. This looks fine. So I'm going to click this little checkbox here that says proceed without any interaction. Now it will go through um, all of the rest of my outputs. I'll click on next and it proceeds on to the next projected output now. The same set of vertical and horizontal lines. If you're going through this process with um, a less complicated screen, i.e. not a parabolic curved screen, then this process takes less time. If you were doing it to just a, a flat image, then um, it would take less time. You can see here that it's given me some vertical lines which are being read back by the camera. Horizontal lines, once again. full white to adjust the colour balance across these different outputs. This image looks fine. We'll count down now and now we'll move on to the, to the final output. So again the same set of range checking, orientation and geometry patterns. Some very clever maths to calculate what this screen surface is. Okay, full white. 
Now it should give me the geometry again. This is all looking very good. I click on next. It, now it's calculating the blend across these three outputs and it gives me my canvas here. Now I can select the edges of this canvas. So if I select a corner and I'm going to actually stretch this canvas so it covers my whole screen. So I select one corner. Um, I can use the mouse here to um, actually adjust my canvas. So I'm going to take this first corner, stretch it up, and you can see on the output here, it's actually stretching my corner up. Stretch the next corner up, take this down to the bottom, take this one down to the bottom left. Um, if I want some fine adjust here, I can use the arrow keys on these corners. Um, so if I select this, this corner, and then here I can choose whether I, I'm uh, adjusting by a coarse amount or a fine amount. I've clicked on fine amount, and if I use the arrow keys here, I can adjust the corners to, to make my coverage over the whole screen surface. Just, uh, just adjust these corners until the whole surface seems to, to fit nicely on my screen. That looks okay, I'm going to click next. And then it gives me this message, congratulations, calibration was successful. I hit finish. And now all that's left to do is to output these warp and blend files. I hit file, export, calibration. Uh, select my outputs, two, three, and four, and my display compound, and click on export. Here you can see on the output, here is my final blend. I'm gonna close down the utility. Here's, here's the blend. All that remains now is to click on some content. There you have it. A warp and blend across three outputs on a non-standard curved screen. The quality of the blend is amazing. It, it blends color and intensity across these outputs in a fraction of the time with truly outstanding results. Auto blend.